Hello and welcome to You Are the Question, the show. And I'm here with my guest again, Crystal's Life, who is also on twitch.tv slash Crystal's Life. And before I introduce her again, though, for episode two, where we go over more knowledge, before we talked about requirements, before we talked about how we acquire knowledge, this time we're going to go a little bit deeper into knowledge, maybe get into how power works from knowledge, because a lot of people say, you know, knowledge is power. So we're going to kind of get into that a little bit more and see where we go from there. Uh, but to generally get the basics of how this show works, what is the show, right? I say you are the question. Well, therefore, I am also the question. We, by our actions that are to be at question, help determine the world we live in. So by questioning ourselves, our condition, our actions, we answer, we question <laughs> how we can make a, the world a better place together. This is where we seek the answers uh, present for us all by nature. The world depends on you, where you stand you are the question. So the objective of the show is to teach others one-on-one -on -one natural law directly and practically utilizing coaching techniques such as questions, recitation, and helping guests come to their own conclusions. It becomes a hands-on learning experience for everyone so that folks may help even teach others the knowledge that we're here to learn, which, you know, I say knowledge is what we're talking about here today. That's why it's so important that we cover it because natural law is knowledge within itself. Each show is about one hour and each guest is limited to about three shows. But for this guest, which is my sister, we're going to go a little bit more in depth as we have been doing. So some ways of teaching this knowledge of natural law is more in depth. However, as different guests are introduced, new ways of teaching will come with it. The difference is often dependent on where an individual currently is with their learning. This is live from Twitch on Coconut TV. Live comments will be read and may or may not be discussed. Uh, so this, through exploring all the many ideas that we have to talk about, our knowledge of natural law becomes more defined and thorough, and therefore more understood. A quick disclaimer is I do not expect people or anyone guest to know the full nature of their upstatism by the end of the show. And this is an exclusive for the One Great Work Network, which you can visit now at OneGreatWorkNetwork.com. I am your host, Corey Edmund Angelot, here with Crystal's life. Crystal Angelot, my sister. There she is. Crystal, you want to introduce yourself again? Just a brief little intro. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Crystal, um, Corey's sister. Um, this is Buddy, uh, my child. I'm a mother of dragon. Um, great. No, <laughs> yeah, great. Um, awesome. I'm a church streamer. I'm a huge believer in awakening yourself, educating others, and always question everything. And yeah, I'm excited for episode two, baby. Let's go. Yes. And it's okay if you haven't watched <laughs> episode one or you just want to increase your knowledge on specifically what knowledge is. <laughs> We're going to kind of go a little bit deeper into that today. But to quickly oh, recap boy. what we did last <laughs> episode, I have a slide here. Crystal, you can see the slide as well on your end, yep. right? Requirements in the role of knowledge. So just this is like a good way to recap. We have some slides here. So human beings say that they want certain conditions to be present for both themselves and their species as a whole, such as happiness, health, peace, freedom, prosperity, etc. However, specific requirements exist in order for human beings to obtain those conditions. If the requirements for obtaining those conditions are not met, those conditions do not just manifest automatically by magical means. What that means is that we as individuals with our teachability, which we discussed last time, it depends on our open-mindedness and closed-mindedness to receive knowledge of those requirements so that way we can achieve what we want in the world. So we don't want to have too close of a mind, too open of a mind, as Crystal has said. You know, it's a funny thing. Again, like I say, the guests come up with their own conclusions here. Crystal came up with the conclusion, the last show we did here, of all these ideas about how we need requirements to get what we want in this world and how maybe we can seek that from a natural source she mentioned. So we're that's where we bring in this idea of natural law as we continue to move on here. And then finally, here's a slide on the role of knowledge. So since human beings as a species do not already have the things they say that they want, it follows logically that the knowledge of the requirements to obtaining the things that they want uh, that they say they want either must be absent or if present that knowledge must be willfully ignored so this is what we might get into a little bit more here today is not just the level of open-mindedness and closed-mindedness but if we can even attain that knowledge in the first place and as you see as we move on in these shows everything starts to connect more and more it says as long as this knowledge continues to remain unknown or ignored the manifestation of the desired conditions will be impossible 
So does that make sense to you, Crystal? Do you understand what this slide is saying? Now, if you don't, that's perfectly fine. You can admit to it. I mean, there's just a lot of information thrown at you. Um, <laughs> so I think it would have to take a couple tries okay. <laughs> to like a couple times to like reread it, really have it sink in my brain. Okay. So yeah, I would I would probably need to reread it like two or three more times just okay. to, just so it like completely clicks. I get the overall gist of it, but like if I have to like dissect, if you ask me, oh hey, what do you think about this? What's the meaning behind this? It may take me a little longer because yeah. I oh that's perfectly fine. That's what this show is here for to do. So um, I can also like reword this to you if you want. Yeah, and maybe that powder. would make it healthy help. I mean, plus also like. You know, I, I know how you think because I live with you and stuff. So, <laughs> right, it's easier that way. Yeah. Um, right. And I think a lot of people should know that when it comes to teaching others about natural law is the people you live with or the people you tend to hang out with, um, they might better respond to the information that uh, you are introducing, whereas people you don't know, maybe not. You may understand better how to teach those folks that you hang out with more because you understand their behaviors and their typical uh, type of conditions. So, Crystal, would you say like you learn better through text or through photos? What is like your best way of learning? I do feel like I have a photographic memory. So I think images, pictures, illustrations, vectors, anything like that, anything visual will definitely help me for sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there, we're definitely going to incorporate that a lot more as we move on. I might want to include more as the shows go on here just for you, just in that regard, since that you mentioned that. Um, that way it can make it more special. Uh, so let's um, basically what those slides are saying. Let's try to come up with those conclusions on our own. Okay. So <laughs> what if somebody doesn't have the requirements to what they want in the world? The requirements of what they want. Okay. I think it's the word requirements that's getting to me. Okay. Because as we know. Yes. So. In the previous episode. <laughs> yeah. 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 So by requirement, as in the, the what you need in order to move forward, right? Like, let's say I have a, a, a door, right? The door needs to be unlocked before I move into the next room. If I don't have the key to the door, I can't get past the door. Okay. So technically, the key is a requirement <laughs> for the door. Now, by okay. requirement, I'm not meaning like some person is telling you you have to do this. I'm saying requirement, like in actuality, like I can't do something unless I do something else. Like I can't stand up without using my legs. True. So. Okay. What if somebody doesn't have the requirements to what they want? Will they be able to achieve what they want? I mean, I think anything's possible if they set their mind to it. If mm -hmm. they they set their mind to it to do what yeah. though? To achieve what they want to achieve at the end of the day. So to achieve heart, the follow... requirements. Yes. Okay. So what? Let's say somebody doesn't have the requirements. Will they ever get what they want? I don't think they will never get the requirements. I mean, there is going to be an opportunity somewhere. Mm -hmm. I don't think that you should just give up and say, oh, listen, I'm never going to be able to achieve it. I think if you seek alternative ways, maybe. So an opportunity. So yes. That opportunity is present for, for certain situations, you're saying. So like yes. it may, it may, like something might appear in front of them. So like a key is right there in front of me, but it might not, but it could be. And if it or is, then I have to pick it up and use it. Or they can seek it out for themselves, make their own key per se, make their own. Okay. Or maybe you know, look for it instead of it just appearing yeah. in front of them. I would say seek and create is like one of the two big ones. Okay. So seek and create. All right. And we're going to tie that into what we saw on the previous slide where it was either absent or ignored, mm. right? So the knowledge was either absent or ignored. Okay. So what does that mean? And so if, if knowledge is absent, then we can't grasp it. So it's like as if the key isn't in front of us. Right. But right. if it's ignored, then it's saying, well, I don't need the key to get past the door. But is that, you do. would that be considered like ignorance then? Yes. Right. As in ignore, as in ignorance. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we need a level of knowledge then, right? Because if we can't connect the fact that the key must be used for the door, how will we ever use the key to unlock the door? We need to know. Why don't, you, know just, that why don't this... you just take your foot and pat bash the door down? <laughs> well, that's... Use force, but not... <laughs> that, that's another requirement, though, you, right? Why do, you need a, why do you need a tool to help you? Why can't you do it yourself? Why does it have to be a man-made thing where, or a physical thing where it can just be you that can unlock the potential, unlock the... Okay. 
So there's still requirements then, right? You need to know that you can kick down the door. Some people are gonna think automatically, oh, there's no way I can get knocked down the door. There's no such thing, there's no, I can't use my foot. It's not a thing in my, I, in my possibilities of ideas. For somebody else, it might be like, oh, we can think outside the box. We yeah. can maybe get a string, pull it here, and then like pick the lock, right? Yes. That's all levels of knowledge then because not everybody can do it, correct? Correct. No, correct. <laughs> okay. So then that requirement within itself for the knowledge, let's say, that we want to achieve here, like the natural law, okay, that is knowledge within itself. There might be requirements of knowledge itself. Like there, there might be knowledge of the requirements itself to achieve that knowledge. <laughs> so what I mean by that is, let's say I introduce natural law to somebody. This is why we're going over it. They might be off put right at the beginning. They might not even want to hear what I'm saying. They might want to just ignore it all. So the first requirement to them even learning natural law is they need to be open minded. Correct. Which even... we went over a yes, lot. A exactly. <laughs> so we need to first know the requirements and then knowing how to go about and fulfilling those requirements, right? Because once we yeah. know that we need the key, we need to know how to use the key, put it in the door, unlock the door and go out of the room. Seems like something would be common sense, right? Get a key, put it in the door. If it's given to you, yeah. Seems easy, yeah, if it's right. given to you. Or if it's in front of you, like I said, right? Right, right. So exactly. in that case, it would just be ignorance if we just didn't do it um, or a lack of consciousness because we were not looking around, right? We weren't looking around to see if there was a key. Um, we weren't aware that it was even a possibility. So is there knowledge, my next question for you, is, is there knowledge that doesn't help people? It's okay. Wait. It... <laughs> yeah, this is a challenging one. Is there knowledge that doesn't help people? Maybe negative knowledge, if you will. Well, I mean, what comes to mind is just like negative knowledge that may indoctrinate people into the wrong ideology, that may be use for evil or for worse or good. Is that a wor worse or for worse or uh, bad things? <laughs> um, mm. To say to say it simply. Um, I don't know. I mean, that's what comes to mind, but I feel like there's a deeper answer to that. Yeah. So you're, you're looking at it like knowledge can be used manipulatively, perhaps like. Kind of. Is that yeah, kind of how you're at? That, was, that was the example I was given that I was giving. Yeah. So like, let's say I said bad knowledge. Is there such a thing as bad knowledge? Like if I told somebody to do something, is it does that actually mean, though, that's something good to do? Like, if there's a higher knowledge to that, I can I mean, tell someone to do something, but is that actually good to do? Depends on what the underlining meaning is, what right. your intention is, what the your knowledge. goal is. The no well, you just said that the knowledge is, t is bad. What if the knowledge was bad, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe if the person is not aware of that, then yeah, they're going to seek forward that. But if the person is awake, and I mean, not awake, but like, is more, uh, I guess, is it knowledgeable? I guess I'm using the word knowledgeable here. Okay, um, of knowing if it's bad or good, they're going to go into the direction of the path that they seek is better. I don't know. Right. So I really don't know how to answer that. It, it's the thing where it's like, are you going to do something that you know is bad or are you going to do something that you know is good? I mean, trust your gut, trust your intuition, and the, like like you said, common sense. You don't want to do something that's bad, right? Most people right. would agree to that. Right, right. But if you don't know that it's bad, you don't. might still do it, right? So you, you don't want to do it, exactly, like you just said. Why do it? You shouldn't do it. So there is such a thing as negative knowledge, perhaps, and it is something that isn't helping people learn it is perhaps oh, could it be a block could it be a blockage like a blockage yeah yeah well if there is knowledge present like we said right there's knowledge present it could be ignored and it could be ignored with some other knowledge think of like a, a religion or something holding people's minds back that religion has some sort of knowledge but that doesn't mean that knowledge is necessarily helpful for their own knowledge or for the knowledge of a greater knowledge which is like god or you know the whole scheme of the world it could be yeah. limiting them so it could be bad knowledge in certain ways and maybe good knowledge in other ways 
I mean, you want to use knowledge to your greater good. Yeah. Okay. So the greater good, I think, is a good concept to talk about, right? Because if it's a greater good, that means there's some smaller amounts of knowledge that there that there's more knowledge outside of it that we need to seek in order to do greater things, right? Right. Okay. <laughs> so it's it's taking me a while to grasp on it because it's just like in my head I think of myself as a good person. Don't worry, we're, we're talking about a bunch of different things. Yeah. I mean I just I think we just I'm thinking of scenarios, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know we don't want to I... overthink this. Yeah. Oh well <laughs> well then you're talking to the well, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's more like me. So what if somebody what in doesn't hell know is happening? the problems with their current knowledge? Is their knowledge incomplete? So like this is sort of what we just were talking about, right? So if they don't know the problems with their current knowledge, then maybe they don't have the full knowledge of what's happening with what, what they're doing. Okay. Um, well, that, that, that's when common sense comes through, right? And using your knowledge hmm. for greater good. And... Whether you're a good person or a bad person, you just hope that you know in the back, using your gut and intuition if you're doing the right thing or not at the end of the day. Mm, okay. So gut and intuition. Very yeah. interesting. I, thought, I, thought, I mean, I thought I said that in the beginning, but maybe I didn't. Maybe it was for the other point. Um, but no, following your gut and, and your intuition, I think, is very key when it comes to things like this. Okay. But well, also having an open heart, open mind, question everything, blah, 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 blah. What we always been talking about. Okay. Why do you why do you think intuition in the gut is important and what makes it important? Um, I think the universe works in a very unique way. And I think we just as humans, we have that that instinct that kind of that uh, there's no other word to use it than intuition. But like it, it kind of just like sparks something in you that you just know you just know that it's a good thing versus a bad thing is there a deeper meaning of what you're trying to ask me <laughs> no i think you hit it because right like, on the nail yeah i mean that's what comes to my mind but then again i feel like you have um a <laughs> a grand answer for this and i'm very <laughs> curious what it is so I, I will give you a little hint right so there's something called conscience right when oh, someone says they have uh, conscience maybe that yeah. kind of connects to the idea that you're ta- trying to bring up yeah. So they sort of have like their own direction of what is right and wrong based on not what they're feeling, but what on the, what they know intuitively. So some people might say it's based on purely gut feeling, but that gut feeling is still based on some sort of knowledge that they acquired. Yeah. True. So keep, let's keep in mind here then everything is knowledge, right? This, this ability for you to come up with all these possibilities and think of what you're going to say is a form of knowledge. The, the knowledge of natural law is something, like I said, within itself. And we say knowledge is power. Why do, you, why do you think people say that? Because I feel like I mentioned this before, that knowledge can be manipulative. Okay. And you can be indoctrinated into the wrong ideology, into the wrong beliefs, into the wrong uh, scheme of things. If that's the underlining message of what is supposed to be conveyed, I guess... But then again, knowledge is the greatest thing that we have. We create, we educate, we, um, I was thinking of another word that rhymed, but it would not make sense. <laughs> <laughs> I was going on the roll and I was like, wait, that wouldn't make sense. Yeah. But no, we create, we educate, we inspire with our knowledge. And I think knowledge is very powerful if it's, you know, used in the better, if it's used for the greater good, like we keep saying. Hmm. Okay, so for the greater good, and we we might want to discuss more about you know our definitions here of good and bad, right? Because that would be right. important to this, seeing that we keep going back to that. And another hint to this idea of natural law, because I think it's just good to keep making these connections, even if we repeat ourselves down the line, is good and bad is actually the, at the heart of natural law. Okay, so. If you want to know what natural law is summed up, right? Like, as you said, you want to be able to describe it to people. One of the yeah. main points you can bring up to people is morality. It helps us know a moral from an immoral action. And we're going to get into that as we go on. And you might be able to connect that with the following questions that I introduce. So, yeah. like, can some of our knowledge be of the essentials? Or, go ahead, what were you going to say? 
No, I was going to say morality, I think, is the number. Like, it, when I, at the end of the day, I think morality is huge. Mm -hmm. So this makes sense how it's like the key feature. It's the key component right. to natural law. So that all makes sense. Okay, continue. Yeah. Um, well, why do you think that's important to have morality as, as an individual? I mean, it shapes you as a person. It shapes you into what you believe in, what you your actions are, what you're mm -hmm. going to give to the world what you're going to um, showcase and produce and create and educate into the world manifest into the world so you said before right that we follow our intuition we follow that greater good yes so and that helps make up our conscience so in a way the morality understanding morality feeds our conscience because if we understand right and wrong then we understand what actions to take that are right and wrong with our gut with our conscience so the knowledge of natural law or morality would then feed our ability to make right and wrong decisions or our common sense our conscience in the world does that make sense yes okay. it does yeah so having knowledge of the essentials things like that right like it is wrong to harm somebody would you say mm -hmm. that's an essential to life yeah i don't i think Violence is never the answer. Harm is never the answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that, see, that is something a lot of people typically have as their belief system. But some yeah. somebody who might be in, heavily... In certain scenarios, yeah. Okay. All right. So... In some scenarios. Right. And we're going to we're gonna establish brain as well. Brain chemistry as we move on. So like right brain versus left brain. You mentioned intuition. That's a component of the right brain. Maybe the left brain... What's the opposite of intuition? Oh, gosh. So we if you're not about... following your intuition. Uh, you are following uh, opposite of intu... Influence? <laughs> well, there's a lot of opposite because, polars here. Well, because in my head, I'm like, what? instead of following your gut, that's your true feeling. You're following what your influenced by versus what you see versus what you are surrounded by so environment factors but i don't know if that's the answer to your to okay like, so you know what we'll, we'll we'll actually discuss that later so i'm gonna okay. keep that one for later but at least okay. i got you thinking about that so <laughs> why would someone hide important knowledge because i don't want to leave that topic right why would someone hide important knowledge then from like another person so let's is say per is this person good or bad um, well, anybody, let's say anybody, just let's not like put people under good or bad. We can't do that, okay. right? Because it's judged by their actions. Well, I didn't know if we were coming up with a scenario. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there are no good and bad people. Could we establish that first of all? Like it depends on their actions. Because each one of those actions could be either good or bad, depending on how they manifest, right? Right. So like, I can't say, you know, just by like you doing one thing that makes you an, a good person. You know, I need to look at all the actions you do to see if you're actually a good person. But even then, it depends on the individual actions. So that that's like where natural law is um, can be broken down and could be used for every sort of case example. But why would someone hide that from somebody? Why would someone hide uh, that knowledge within itself? So that knowledge yeah. of right and wrong, the knowledge of you can follow your gut. You know, you can follow these, the the law of nature. Well, things that come Karma. to mind is either one, um, their ego. Two, they're scared. Three, they want to use it for uh, like that. Like they want to use it for power. But but then again, they can also be just to change the world. Okay. And, they're just, and they don't know where they go from there because they're, it's either, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So perhaps... <laughs> we'll, we'll go with that. So perhaps that ties into the phrase when people say power can be used for good or bad. Can be for yes, power can be used for good and bad. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean it depends, right? It depends on the. But I would say in general, sure. Okay, so you said knowledge, you know, it, and and we said knowledge is power before, right? And then you sort of mentioned it. Kind of funny you mentioned this, but you said knowledge could be used with power right and it could be used for bad so yes yes 
Can we establish that knowledge is power and power can be used for good or bad? Yes. Okay. What are you thinking? I'm processing it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's fine. Well, no. Power is... Knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. And knowledge can be good and bad. Power can be good and bad. Right. And so at the, the end of the day, it's all about morality and your intuition, your gut, the manifestation that you want to put into the world, I guess, in a way. Okay. You know? All right. Um, so... Yeah. All right. So perhaps, you know, it is having that power hold over somebody, right? Having certain knowledge the other person does not. So let's say I know how to leave the room with the key and I keep that away from somebody who doesn't know how to do that. Well, I can leave the room anytime I want. I'm able to go wherever I want. I can do more things than this person who has less knowledge and I can manipulate them because they don't have that. Of course. Yeah. Okay. So it's a psychology type of trick, right? It's yeah. having more knowledge over somebody who doesn't. And so maybe that's like a pyramid system, perhaps, right? Like if somebody who is up top in the pyramid system, they have more oversight over everything. They have more knowledge of how everything works. Okay, so works. you are thinking like elite, also higher knowledge power up above the the, the base of the pyramid slash yeah. well, I'm asking the you. most common person. Well, no, because that's what my head was. And okay. I... I wanted to like name something like, okay, so it could be government. Like, you know, they have such high power over the, over the people that whatever mm -hmm. they say is law, right? Cause they make the laws, right? And okay. so they hold the power over everyone. And if you don't follow this power, then there's going to be consequences. And so, but you also have to think about, you know, at the end of the day is the power used for good or bad but you take your own approach on it because mm. you're the one who's living uh -huh. in it and if you're okay with it slash if you're not okay with it change it maybe we should question why they have power in the first place right because if we say knowledge is power how did they obtain that power they have to have some sort of knowledge that the rest of the people do not have and they're keeping perhaps I think they're definitely dumbing down the human race in certain ways, but that's a whole nother topic. Now, yeah, well, I'm not trying to come to those conclusions, right? Right, yeah, but, right. That's um, <laughs> well, it's, it's, the thing is, is I mean, I, obviously I would agree with that statement based on my understanding of the knowledge at hand. I don't know why my light keeps flashing. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, it's, a, it's a party in Corey's room. <laughs> yeah, so you see it? It just keeps flashing on and off. So, um, so do we see how powerful knowledge can be having yeah. certain knowledge other people can have so like I, we, they can do certain things they can manipulate others it's not a good thing so knowledge needs to as power needs to be used responsibly right that's yes. another quote that people tend to say so i'm going to show you another slide here and um, maybe that'll put this more into perspective for everybody so okay. here we have a slide right of a pyramid system because you you mentioned it and funny enough here it is um you know, hidden knowledge held by the few, and then everybody else seems to be in a somewhat ignorance there of it. Okay, so why is that? And what we see here in the slide is it's describing hidden knowledge. And it says the word occult is derived from the Latin objective uh, adjective, adjective uh, occultus, which means hidden, which comes from the Latin verb occultere, which means to hide, to conceal, to keep secret. Right? So. It's like he he I I'm a I'm a kid now I can take I can keep a secret from somebody you know I got candy my parents won't know and but if the parents did know what would they be able to do? Oh, you're asking me. I thought you were the story. I was like I'm so like I'm so nope. engrossed in the story. Gotcha. <laughs> no, I was gonna catch, uh, catch you by surprise. Um, can we? Can I take a second? I'm so look. That's where my child is. Can I, I'm so sorry. Can we take a pause right, on the so show? <laughs> you have you have knowledge of your kid being on the stairs, and what does yes. that allow you to do? Take I have action. To go take action and stop him from destroying. Yes, the so house. go do that. Okay, <laughs> BRB. I'm so sorry, everyone. Oh my goodness. So this is an example of how we can use knowledge for what we want to achieve in the world. Hence, going back to our previous episode where we talked about requirements. Let me look at some of the comments here. Trajan, welcome, man. Nice seeing you again. I do miss you too, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> Looking around. And uh, Maddie, 602, thank you for following. 
and uh, thank you for lurking as well. And I appreciate that. If you guys have any input here, I'll read your comment. If you want to maybe ask any questions, anything that might help us learn more, all helpful. So. I'm so sorry. No, I'm so okay. sorry. I'm so sorry. Do you see how knowledge was important there? To see that he was there, first took the consciousness, the awareness, right? Not ignorance of saying, nope, he's not there. I don't need to bother with it. He's just going to do his thing. Maybe he's going to wreck the house, but I'm just going to stay ignorant of it and not take action. But yeah. instead, you chose, I'm going to be conscious and aware of the fact that he is there. So then you took the knowledge of that, knowing that he was there, to then take the knowledge of what can you do to then take action. Make sense? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's good case example. <laughs> And I, yeah, it is. And like, um, I just think if you just ignore, it, it's just going to get worse, like you said. Right. And then it's just like in the back of your head, like, oh, I could be doing something, but it's <laughs> your it's your job or not, whether you're going to make the effort to make the change or not. Right. So just to conclude, do we kind of understand how this works now at the pyramid system? It happens within everyday life, whether you know we're looking at government or not. Some people might want to use others. Um, as a way for ruling over them by way of knowledge. If they have certain yeah. knowledge that they don't, they keep them in the dark. Hence the bricks at the bottom of the pyramid are covered in darkness, whereas those at the top have the light, right? Have you ever look light. at the Illuminati pyramid system, the so-called Illuminati pyramid with the yes. eye in the top of the pyramid? Right, so now we can understand there's light on the top and darkness also, on the bottom. I mean, I don't know if I heard it from natural law because I mean, you have showed me these mm -hmm. before and I have watched um, a few of Mark right. Passmore's, you know, obviously his all his slides, and I'm all about, you know, conspiracy theories, and so I'm huge about the Illuminati and just. But the fact that I mean, I don't know if this came from him, but the ones up top are the enlightened ones, but also mm -hmm. not like. Well, in, in my head, enlightened means positive, good. At the end of the day, you're trying to change the world, but I feel like enlightening enlightening in this case the people up top are going to manipulate deceive corrupt mm. interesting because we are the slaves and we are the ones in panic so perhaps so perhaps they are building the bricks to keep us we're, in the dark and we're, we're trying to tear we're... down the bricks oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so no, i would yeah, so I was, there's knowledge. I was, I was gonna say that we're the ones building the box because we're the ones working for them in a sense mm. but then again by staying ignorant by saying yeah ignorant because we're not questioning the bigger picture so we are not seeking the knowledge that they have and that's why they're able yeah. to rule over us yes mm. interesting so maybe that ties into what the next slide shows you looking on the screen cool. look, okay. at us with, look at us just <laughs> hopping into that nice transition so let's kind of try to connect this here with natural law, and you'll see why this is so important. As I mentioned, occult knowledge, which, what does occult mean? Hidden. All right, great. So hidden, hidden, knowledge. hidden knowledge constitutes both the knowledge of human consciousness. What do you think consciousness is? Uh, we're going to define that later on, but uh, I think you'll, you'll know this too. So I think everybody generally knows, and that's the beautiful part about this. I like I obviously know what consciousness means but like putting it into <laughs> another word is what's yes. complicated for sure uh consciousness I would say awakened intuition slash okay. sounds good yeah. that sounds good to me <laughs> well, awakened intuition I like that and how it <laughs> operates so occult knowledge he's saying here in this slide okay by Mark Passio it says it constitutes both the knowledge of human consciousness, so essentially how our ability to perceive the world around us works, and how it operates, right? So how does our ability to perceive the world around us, how does it work? That's essentially what he's saying is hidden. So our very ability to understand how we perceive the world around us, that is being hidden. And so it says, the knowledge of natural law is the unseen universal spiritual laws which govern the consequences of human behavior. Now, the reason why that's important is because if it's governing the consequences of human behavior, then we know, right, we know what our actions do into the world. 
So then we know what actions not to do. Hence, going back to what you said previously about conscience, right? And knowing right from wrong action using our gut, our common sense. Yes. Okay. Gut, intuition, common sense. So maybe that's all part of consciousness. And if we understood that about oh. consciousness. Yeah, yeah. And used our consciousness, we mm -hmm. can then understand our, our behavior better. And then we can also teach others what behaviors are wrong. So that way we can all make the world a better place. Perhaps. Yeah. I would hope so. Yeah. So now let's look at the next slide. And this one is uh, where it gets really particular. Such knowledge is not commonly known. Okay, so such knowledge about consciousness is not commonly known in it because it has been deliberately hidden in order to create and maintain a power differential. How many people actually have connected the dots like you have, as we have here? Maybe, you know, we're just coming across it for, for the first time or whatever. It's okay if you don't have a full understanding of it. But how many people actually know that the knowledge is what's really important here? That the knowledge is what's keeping them in the, in the dark? that it is knowledge that helps them take the power back from those who are in power, so to speak, back mm. to their lives. Ooh, that was powerful. Right, so people What you say, said, that sentence, I hope you have that written down or <laughs> somehow, because now that, I feel like that right there is yeah. kind of showcasing the world that we're in right now, like literally to a T. Right, and that's why it's so important. So when people say, Let's bring the power back to the people. What do they actually mean by that? Um, in my head, the way that the world is going and the common person on every single social media and what they're trying to speak, I mean, I just feel like it's... Okay, forget all that. Forget no, all that. Well, what comes to mind when you said that was their, their voice to be heard. Okay. All right. So in a way, you're saying their power is their voice. But as we have established, more of the power is their knowledge, is it not? And their voice is dependent on the knowledge, right? Because otherwise, what are they speaking for? Are they just speaking gibberish? Are they speaking for something that has worth? If it has worth, wouldn't it be knowledge? Because it's something that has power, something that has meaning? Yeah. Yeah. So, so technically, even if you say their voice, right, their voice is still dependent on the knowledge. So technically... It's all knowledge. So when I asked you that question, the correct answer is actually knowledge. You know, it's it's knowledge that is being kept away from people. And that is the power system. So how do we bring power back to the people? We give them knowledge. But do we have to actually give them knowledge if it's about consciousness, if it's about natural law, which is universal? all around us the knowledge is there it's just it's it's about the fact that if they are willing to make the effort and take their energy and like like we keep saying opened their mm. mind to the idea that what they're going to be learning may be fully against what they've been growing up on and i think that's a barrier that people are scared to cross because they're so right. indoctrinated into one ideology that when they come to that point where like wow wait this is everything's a lie like i realize that i'm waking up and this is all a lie this can't be true what i've been learning in school and what has been um you know brainwashing me for the longest time um I don't find this to be very accurate. So I'm going to keep with my beliefs of what I've been told my whole entire life rather than given, you know, rather than opening my mind and have the opportunity to explore different perspectives and gain the knowledge that is going to ultimately free you because knowledge is power and, you know, the truth will set you free. Okay. Yeah. That, you know, that's actually a quote, right? From many mm -hmm. different texts. Yeah. Yeah, so... it's my favorite. I love it. I think that's a really great, powerful, yet so simple. Like sometimes so why is that though? Because it's simple. Oh, wait, why is that? Why so, is what? So because you, you're using that, that quote. So I want you to know why it's meaningful, right? Because a lot of people will say things doesn't mean they actually know why they're saying it. So why is it that uh, what was what why, was the phrase you said? The truth will set you yeah, free. Yeah, the truth will set you free. Why is that the case? Because for personal experience, 
um, like just being clo- no, I don't want to say I was always closed minded, but what I mean, I never really in got hell gotten the opportunity to explore different perspectives until, I mean, a year or two ago, maybe a little more than that now when it comes to nowadays. But um, from personal experience, the truth just feels like there is a weight lifted off your shoulders and it feels powerful. It feels enlightening. It feels that like everything just makes more sense. You start to like connect dots. So in a way. you're, you're understanding the knowledge. Yes. And it kind <laughs> of, you're kind of just like, wait, wait a second. So everything that I kind of have been taught and indoctrinated and kind of brainwashed into a certain ideology for the longest time, switching over into a more, um, awoken, uh, enlightening, more uh, occult knowledge has completely, well, I mean, it's going to set you free because you're going to realize that there's dots that are going to be connected and things that you're going to be like, wait a second, how did I not know this? Because it's just, it, I mean, to me, it just all makes sense. Yeah. Without but, but you even understanding the whole of natural law. Exactly. But then you have like aha moments and then you start, you know, doing deep research into these things. And then you're like, wait, wow, it, it's all kind of just coming together. Mm-hmm. And that's how the universe works. Synchro- you know, high vibration frequencies and okay. manifesting things into the world. And it's just, it's crazy how that all is interconnected mm-hmm. with this knowledge as well. Right. If that, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it makes perfect sense to me at least. Um, and I think... To folks, I just want to like clarify a certain thing. So when you say research, that's not limited to online research, right? It could right. just be observations of the world around you. And perhaps that's where we learn the best. Connecting with nature. And I, last episode, when you asked me, what are some alter, like, what are some things that you can do to further expand your knowledge, further expand um, or I don't know what the question was, but the, I was, when I looked back at the episode, I was so, I kind of like kicked at myself. Like I should have said nature is the answer because not only is that your brand Corey and like everything that we believe in, but like, I just can't believe that didn't come to mind at first. And it's mm-hmm. just, it's so true because nature is so powerful. We came from nature. We are in nature. We need nature to survive. And so the power that nature has and learning from that is very powerful. And it's so important. Right. And then another thing I think we should just uh, disclaim for the sake of it is you mentioned like conspiracy theory. But is this knowledge really a conspiracy theory just to understand that knowledge is power, just to understand that people are closed minded or open minded? This isn't this just human psychology. The reason why I say conspiracy theory is because people who come up to me and they don't believe in the things that I believe in, they call me a quack or a conspiracy artist. So I think that's just for my beliefs of being awoken and the truth about the world and everything is just, you know, out to make us become slaves to the elite. And you know what I mean? Like, okay, that that whole entire interconnected circle. So do you think it's because they lack the knowledge that you have about the subject? I think I think there's a filter. I think there's a wall. I think there's a blockage somewhere in their head that's now allowing them to it's like I, their mind is closed i guess you can say because we keep now, saying it we don't, an open mind. And we don't want to be morally superior right we don't want to have that like oh we know it all you don't know it ha 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 no, we want to but share I don't it we come off like that either way because if we're educating people we wouldn't be doing this if we didn't want to educate people right. on this right. if we, we wanted it, we would, if we wanted to have that power like like the people up there, we would keep it for ourselves and then manipulate it you know what I mean? Yeah. Then, then we would use it in a manipulative way. Right. But we're not. We're educating people. We're giving them the opportunity to question us, to question the things that we are saying, allow them to voice their opinion, allow me to voice my opinion. And overall, we're kind of just having this this network of flowing ideas. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be, you know, powerful no matter what, because it's just brain actions, just ha- brain actions. It's just a bunch of good things yeah so that brings me to uh that's uh, so taking all that that was i think really good just generally speaking and I, I try to keep in mind all the people who you know might still be closed-minded to these perspectives and of, of course. course i i want them to still look into this all for themselves you know don't rely on research or whatever 
look intuitively for yourself. If this knowledge is universal, is all around us, then you should be able to do that. Some level to which you need to access it, though, depends on, you know, what is present for you, if you are ignorant of it, your consciousness and awareness of it. Maybe there's certain things that are limiting your awareness. Think of drugs, right? If I'm constantly stimulated by coffee, I may be more aware. But if I'm like completely drunk, I'm going to be like completely out of it. I'm not going to be aware of anything. Maybe I'm just going to knock out, fall asleep, right? So sure. like there's going to be certain environments that depend uh, uh, that help create your awareness and your awareness is important, which is why, you know, fixing your diet could be an important factor when it comes to your awareness. If your diet is going to help you have a clearer mind, a clearer conscience with an ability to um, perceive everything around you easier, then this knowledge might come as easier to you to understand even our perspectives of that knowledge. See what I mean? No, and I agree. Okay. I agree. I'm so, on the same page. Let's do a scenario here. Okay. Right, because you like pictures. So let's picture, and I, I could do, draw this down for you if you want, but let's picture that light atop the pyramid is for having the knowledge, right? And the dark below is for not having that knowledge. As that slide shows, I could show it again. Yeah. Right. right? And um, what would happen if to the pyramid system if those in the dark soon had that knowledge? I think then overall, eventually, I think the whole pyramid would be enlightened. Which would mean what? What would that pyramid look like? A light of a a, a lit up pyramid. (laughs) Okay. Well, you could say that, but um, is it really a pyramid? I'm sorry? Is it really a pyramid then? You know, if if the light is with everybody, then is there anybody in the dark? Is there any bricks Um, holding people? Well, I think that the elite, the people who are on top, may start to dull because they are losing their power, okay. and they're losing their power, their power to control the people at the bottom, and so they may start to drift away, slash dull, slash. So maybe they become more like one of us. I don't know because then, if we get to their level. But we still keep our morals, and we still keep By our. By we, belief. you mean everybody? Yeah, the people at the bottom of the pyramid, right? Yeah, everybody, the mass of the world. Right, right. So if everybody had the same knowledge, what would the pyramid system be? Stationary plane. There you go. I don't know. There yeah? you go. Yes, that's the answer. No, it's not. It is because you're leveling out the playing field. If I were to give everybody the same amount of knowledge. Well, then who is there to rule over somebody else? Everybody is equal, right? A truly equal world. <laughs> okay, so so perhaps that enlightenment is having knowledge, right? Having the light, that way you're not in the dark. So if everybody's enlightened, they have this knowledge available, they understand it, they're enlightened. The light is with everybody. So that with pyramid it- at the top comes down to the bottom. It breaks all the bricks. We tear and down the bricks. Be, yeah. Okay. Right. So you can see me as like a light mason, as Mark Pash would put, where we just take down the bricks so the light can come down for everybody. Right. And you might see the elites Mm -hmm. as the dark masons because they want to keep building up the bricks to conceal the light for themselves, their ego, the I. So they can keep that for themselves and keep that light away from the rest Mm -hmm. at the bottom Mm -hmm. and keep their pyramid system. But we want to have a pyramid system in nature if everybody has this knowledge and it's not being used or manipulated for someone else. Therefore, we'd have like this circle or this, you know, this just plane of just equal- equality, which we, we will go into as we move on. Um, equality, right? Because you might be questioning, like, if this is universal, is this all around us? Um, we're talking about morality. Equality is a common issue nowadays. So we do want to talk about that, perhaps. Right. So yeah um let's let's look at the next slide here uh what were you going to mention no i was just saying they're good they're important topics to touch upon absolutely and should not be um ignored yeah so we will definitely get into that as we move on just reading some of the chats here 
<laughs> what is meant with natural law just came into the stream what is the topic i'm a bit confused that's perfectly fine and i you know like i said people are going to tune in and people are going to watch this episode without watching the previous episode that's perfectly okay we're not even getting in fully into what natural law is but natural law is the governing dynamics of consciousness it basically con uh, helps govern the consequences to our behavior so think of karma think of like the golden rule and we're going to explore that here with Crystal, who's my guest in these episodes, where we go in depth into each subject and get more into uh, what knowledge is, how to acquire it, and then moving on to, well, the knowledge of natural law. What do we do with natural law? How do we acquire it? And then how do we put that into the world? So first, we must understand knowledge, and then we can understand what types of knowledge do what. And natural law can help us understand our actions. And if we understand our actions, then we know how to make a better world, perhaps. So uh, that's just a, a general sum, I guess, I can give you. I would suggest, you know, t staying tuned to the episodes, listening for yourself, and see uh, what you can learn from it. Uh, there's many resources, as many websites as well on the screen for you there to visit. So, and I thank you, Crystal, for hanging out all this time. I really appreciate it. Aw, thank so, you. <laughs> well, this is fun. I love this. Yeah. I think education in the right way is so powerful and the brain is so limitless. Hmm. It's limitless. And so just giving it a little bit more juice, a little bit more love, a little bit more soul seeking for yourself too, you know, giving it something to kind of give it a belief, I guess, because there's not as much like, I don't know. It's just, it's euphoria at the end of the day. Okay, great. So <laughs> let's look at this slide and see what it says now, just to sum up sort of this pyramid system. And I want to see if you agree with it or if you would make any additions or any edits to it. Okay, so be completely honest. It says the knowledge of natural law and its operations constitutes the most deeply occulted information on Earth, which the powers that be seek to keep hidden from the people of Earth at all cost because its understanding would, quote, level the playing field and put an end to the currently entrenched systems of control yes so that's what we were talking about right yes there you go so we're leveling out the pyramid system no longer is there a couple few hundred people ruling over a couple million does that make any sense to you i will never forget the one video that you showed me corey it's a video he showed me this one video how there's like a handful of people who are controlling us right i mean there may be a little bit more than a handful but the amount of human beings, the ratio between human beings, us everyday people, compared to them, how easy it can be for us to take them over. It's just we need the knowledge, like Corey says, we need the like we need the willpower. We need to do the action to do that. Because at the end of Not the day, what we... I say, but what is required for us to be free. Yeah, exactly. But um I'm sorry to cut you off. I just had to no, add that. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I know you get it because you, you sent me the video. So I don't know if you want to elaborate on it more. But I mean, overall, we can... Oh, something the masses. What's the word? Blank the masses. Uh, um, um, come on, genius child. Free? Awaken? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, but like... Um, What's the context? Are, the context is like we can... If we take in, like, if we take the action and we're we take down that that fear within ourselves to take down such a huge power in the world, well, we can overthrow it. Overthrow, overthrow the masses, um, because they are so little compared to everyday people like us. There's there is an abundance of people on this earth, right? Mm -hmm. And so if we just all get together, I mean, that's kind of I don't know something like that. Okay, so. But I think we'll, we're kind we'll of explore trickling. that idea too, you know, yeah. about overthrow, because a lot of people but, might think of that and think, well, let's just take down the government. Let's just yeah. like, turn it into some whatever we it's want the, to turn it's it the into. One, it was the one word that came to, to mind. Yeah. And I was like, wait, that's going to be so, like, that can be taken so many different right. ways. You can, yeah. Yeah. And like I said, the pyramid system is not limited to government, but government is a good example, perhaps, of a pyramid system. That we see evidently in our world, uh, especially as the slides have also mentioned um, about the knowledge of consciousness and awareness. If people are aware of themselves, their own actions, uh, maybe Correct. they wouldn't comply as much uh, with the actions that are inherently immoral or not right to do just because their masters told them to do it. 
you know, there's we have to question if what we're doing is actually right at the end of the day, hence going back to morality, um, you know, regardless of who's telling us what it's what we're doing. Again, the actions matter. The actions is what makes up the world. It's what makes up who we are as well. So think of it like, you know, because you, you're into health, right? So your actions of choosing healthier foods are going to result in you becoming healthier. You're choosing, you're selectively choosing for yourself with your free will, your conscience, what actions you want to take in life with food, in this case, to then achieve what you desire, which is a healthier state of mind, being, and so forth. Right. So, right. yeah. And um, I think uh, we can talk about uh, this to also briefly recap on some of the things we mentioned between this episode and the last episode. Uh, nescience versus ignorance. So ignorance is where um, the information is present, but we're just not you know, paying attention to it. We're just straight up ignoring it, pushing it off the side, pushing it off the rug, maybe making every excuse that we can to just make it as if it's not there, even though it clearly is, right? Whereas nescience is where the knowledge is not even there or attainable in the first place, which is rarely the case when it comes to understanding con consciousness, because consciousness is something we all have, right? We, ha we all have the ability to make decisions, and we all make actions within our daily life. So we are all fully capable of understanding, you know, what our effects are in the world. And anything that, you know, people might use as an excuse saying, well, we can't is usually a form of ignorance. Um, and maybe they actually can't. But again, then it's not necessarily ignorance. So we that's why that we make this dis distinction, this difference between nescience and ignorance. Can someone ac acquire the knowledge? So this is the context of not knowing. Does this make sense to you? No, it does. It yeah. really does. Yeah. So now that we see this, well, the pyramid system is pretty much purely based on ignorance, um, at least for those um, who clearly can attain the knowledge perhaps of natural law or the aspects thereof, or maybe it's introduced to them in such a formally fashion as this, right? Because I'm introducing it to you in a very formal fashion. Here's slides, here's uh, certain texts describe every certain word and simple way of doing, but people can understand this also through different words. They can understand it through different phenomena. They don't have to use the exact same language, the exact same slides. And I think that's the beauty of this knowledge and why it could go so um, contested in different ways because people just want to use wordplay. But generally speaking, we agree at the end of the day. So let's just get to the simple basics. Mm -hmm. So this is a picture of people in today's modern society. Um, who, who, yes, <laughs> when we say they're asleep, what does that mean? They're not awake, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes they're when I ask you a question, I'm just asking for like the, the polar opposite, like the, the just the obvious, right? Am I allowed to say sheeple? Yeah, right. Well, if they're all falling asleep, right? And they're all following the same orders, that would make them a sheep. That's why we typically call them a sheep is because they're all doing the same thing, like a, like a herd, a cattle. Yeah. Um, it's funny because I, I uh, on my streams, and people ask me, like, oh, are you ever going to, like, travel the world? I'm like, yeah, I will when I'm not a sheeple <laughs> because everything going on between all the mandates and requirements, and it's just, like, it's, it's very, you know, we all know. But, uh, yeah, I'm like, yeah. And I use sheeple in, like, the very, like, bluntest way. And I and like then I see what people respond to, like, when I say it. Because I feel like there's only a selective few that actually know what sheeple actually means. And I've actually had people come up to me and ask me, like, what do you mean by sheeple? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, people who follow what they are given. So, because they don't have the, like, they just, the they don't. The free will? The conscious? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. They're conscious. They're free will. They don't, they don't, like, they don't try to approach a different path you know they don't have a, a a clear understanding of an open mind that can ultimately free them and help them right so like what we mentioned previously about teaching right so not being too close-minded or open-minded which means we have some level of determining what actions we should take and also some level of um randomness which is our free will so like we're not just going to go fully with what is told to us mm -hmm. and we're also not going to go fully with what we think ourselves we're going to make a a mixture of both find the perfect action to take based on our understanding of both the random and the, and the deterministic component 
Yes. <laughs> yeah. So maybe I could have explained that better, but yeah. Uh, no, I, I mean, you uh, you hit it right on the nail. I think you okay. know. Um, but I think there's just so many sleeping people. They're sleeping zombies. Yeah. Now. Um, yeah. Go ahead. No, no, no. I want you. I want you to go first. Yeah. Well, I, I do want to provide an example for what you mean by sheeple, just to yeah. I think yeah. further emphasize that point, because I like to just go a little bit more in detail so people understand. Um, this might be an extreme case, and some people might not like to see this, but this is an example of sheeple, is it not? Look at the slide here. So is this an example of being a sheeple? <laughs> That's not what I think of when it comes to sheeple. Mm -hmm. that, so you stumped me it? on that. But yes, because I understand sheeple. Oof. <laughs> right. So that is that could be an oof for some people. And it's like, wait, well, police. Uh, but, oh, we, we need them for a peaceful society, a lot of people think. so. But they are just as uh controlled because they're still following mm. orders from a higher power and let me ask you something just like a general question right and this is again not to upset anybody but are they any different from you and i just like any uh, politicians i think it's their title their label that makes them the way okay I see it as two things. Okay. <laughs> I, the common, okay, say Chris is a, is, is, should I use Chris? Chris is in house. Hi, Chris. I see you lurking. <laughs> um, let's not use Chris. <laughs> um, Bob, let's use Bob. Bob's a, a policeman. Bob has to go to work and follow what is given to him from his, from the high, from his uh, manager, from, I don't, I'm not in the police world. I don't know who the higher rank of police is. Anyway, sheriff. Cool. I don't know. Um, so, Whoever is giving him the orders, he must obey. Otherwise, obviously, he's going to lose his job or some type of reprimation is going to happen. Bob, at the end of the day, could be the best, nicest, m most moralist person ever. But because he's he has that title of a cop, he has to do things that is required from the law or required mm -hmm. from his job. Um, even though Bob may, may not or may agree with it, um, I think it depends on the person and the individual, whether they're a sheeple or not. Because if Bob thinks that being a, a police is, if he's doing it for the greater good to protect people, that is the be the great. Protecting people should be your number one priority, making sure that they feel safe and they are safe and feel that they are at home and feel that like they are loved and, you know, morals are still there. But if you are, you know, manipulating the power, I think that's when things can get a little janky. Well, this is where we can then distinguish, you know, right? Like what is a right versus wrong action? Because let's say he is a generally moral person within his own life, which I'm sure most people generally are, right? Does that mean that the actions that he is obligated to take by his job or position or having to wear a costume and badge and so forth, um, oh, is you you know, telling him what to do or telling that person what to do, right? Does that mean that those actions are right or wrong? Does, the, the, does he as an individual have the... Uh, well, he certainly has the right to decide for himself um, what actions to take, but is he actually using his conscience if he's just following somebody's orders? No. No. So in a way, he's sort of suppressing his human ability for the sake of some people who rule over him, telling him what to do with their conscience. So there, he's letting somebody else's conscience rule over his conscience for the way he does things and he may convince himself that it's okay because the person who's telling him to do it is telling him it's okay but is it actually okay by natural law that's what we're going to get into and so i don't expect anybody to have a full answer on that yet until we move into the episodes but it's just something to spark a, a little bit of ideas in your head with the yeah. given knowledge that we have about how knowledge works how power works how systems like this work how sheeple like the masses and the bricks are closed together and right. we are together human species we're all one we're all together but yet yeah. we do choose to put certain people on the pedestal or put certain people in positions that seem to be higher than an everyday person so we have to question why is that is there an actual legitimacy to that um where do we draw the line in other words you know with what is 
legitimate what is the, what is supposed to be done in society when it comes to you know so-called keeping order and peace and so forth right yeah. yeah yeah so this is what we have you know a world uh it, you know prison we have to unlock the key to that within oh, itself yeah. and so the big question is why um now why is questioning important this is what we're going to kind of wrap up here if you don't okay. mind um, yeah. Why is questioning important? Because we, we asked a lot of questions in this um, episode. And why do you think we did that? To have an open mind, question everything. And asking why, it's kind of going into the deeper roots of things, right? Um, and then you branch out to other, it's kind of like, think of it as a tree, right? You you wouldn't have a tree without its roots to find the water what that it needs to survive. in hell right? is happening? And so, and then eventually when the, when the tree is, you know, at its highest peak, it's going to be growing all these branches and all these opportunities, all these leaves of beautiful perspectives and color, right? And so I think that's a really good example to explain how, why everything is, should be, and could be questioned at all costs. Mm. <laughs> so why <laughs> question and why use the question why? <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah, why why is a pretty important question, and why are we doing this? So let's let's re, let's wrap up with this. Why are we creating this conversation? Why am I talking to you about this? Educate people. <laughs> no, to bring awareness, to educate people, to hopefully you know make them question about the things that they've been learning, what they are learning, what they were learning, what they have learned, past, present, and future. Um, all making a full circle and um, just be very, also be skeptical, 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 is that the word? Skeptical of, you know, of everything because you want to make sure you are questioning everything. That's why why, why is very powerful <laughs> because why at the end of the day is going to, like truth I said, truth always sets you free. But knowledge is also very powerful because if you take that action to enforce that knowledge, you know? Yeah. Okay. So we want to take actions based on the right knowledge. Uh, just to recap. The right, the right knowledge. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And, and we want to find out what that right knowledge is. We want to find out what the requirements to obtaining those knowledge are, which we determined is open mind, closed mindedness, which is yeah. like a good starting ground for most people. Um, yeah. Cause sadly in today's world, not a lot of people always have an open mind. We discussed that last time. Um, so that's why we had to always start there. And, yeah. you know, once we establish that ground, we can then maybe go into the knowledge and see maybe what we relate on, right? Because there's a lot of things that I mentioned to you that we seem to relate on a lot, uh, not because like, you know, we're brother and sister or because you we know, live I, in the same household. Right. <laughs> no, but because you, you don't even know much about natural law, but yet you're able to come to these conclusions on your own because you're a human being. And I think most human beings can, and I think this show will demonstrate that through time, is how the fact that we're human beings is what is creating our ability to grasp the same knowledge that we all have. And if we all just utilize that same knowledge, we can achieve uh, our same similar desires, which is what? Happiness, love, you know? Those simple, basic things people generally want, but they may express through different means. In world peace. <laughs> world peace, which is totally possible. And we will get into all that as we move forward. So thank you, Crystal, for joining me. No, I appreciate it for episode two, Knowledge Woo! and Power. And next time we'll talk a bit more about everything, especially getting more into action and how we problem solve the world. Oh boy, problem solving. You heard that here, guys. Oh gosh, she's been making me do some problem solving. <laughs> yes. So, and I will read. I will read comments after this, just so you know, uh, Circo. I'll, I'll 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 answer your question after this. Uh, but thank you everyone for watching. If you want to join us on Twitch, if you're watching this from the OneGreatWorkNetwork.com or anywhere else, twitchtv TV. If you want to check out Crystal's work, twitchtv Life. And yes, thank you everybody for joining us, enjoying this conversation, opening minds, opening perspectives. As always, thank you. Peace out. Thank you, Crystal. Bye. Thank you so much, everyone. Woohoo. <laughs> <laughs>